glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Yes. Appreciate what God done last night yes. in the service yes. very much. Amen. My wife uh, felt like that I should come on this morning. Uh, uh, she didn't feel led to sing. So if you want to hear her sing, you can come back tonight and uh, hear her sing. But uh, uh, I just uh, told you last night that what the Lord had given me that I uh, wouldn't be able to preach it all in one night. I guess you could understand after the service last night. And uh, But uh, I, I want to continue with that uh, back in the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Amen. Appreciate it. Uh, the word of the Lord and how God's helped us. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> yes. But I want to be back and uh, go back to the book of Mark, chapter number five, and pick up there and, and flip over to the book of Ephesians, chapter six, All right. and just pick up right after where we left off last night. And I uh, don't think I'll finish it this morning. Right. Uh, uh, if the Lord should allow it, maybe we'll finish it tonight, right. or Monday night, or Wednesday night, or. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mark chapter number five. Uh, We began to read last night and we made it down uh, to the fourth verse, but uh, or maybe the fifth verse. But uh, I want to pick up there in the sixth verse. And the Bible says in Mark five and six. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. He besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Amen. The book of Ephesians chapter number 6. Uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 12. The Bible said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of God. Amen. We begin to talk to you last night. Uh, about spirits on assignment. Uh, There were four questions that I I brought before you last night that I wanted to uh, talk to you about. Last night we only got to two of those questions. Those questions we talked about last night was where is this man and how did he get there? Uh, uh, The four questions was where is he? How did he get there? How does he get out? And how does he stay out? Amen. And I want to talk to you about how, amen, he gets out this morning. Uh, And we begin to talk to you a little bit about where he was, dwelling amongst the tombs. Uh, He began to talk to you about how he was cutting himself and crying day and night. How he walked around naked and could not be bound. Amen. Began to cut his cell. Uh, Whether you believe this or not, we actually had individuals that come after service and began to express to me and Brother Luke that they actually had been cutting themselves. And how God had done that amongst the many things he'd done last night. Uh, But as we begin to talk, we begin to express to you about the plan of the enemy. To drive you into the tombs of your life. How... That the devil would have you driven into a little hole of your life, never to return, never to come out of that place. We talked to you about where he was and how he got there, of how that there were spirits of hell that were on assignment by God to take him and to destroy his life. We talked to you about how hell has a plan for your life, and he's not just concerned, my God, because that you're out of the house of God, but he's not going to stop 
until your life is taken out of you, until the breath of God is no longer in you. Uh, we, we, we talk to you about how he's not satisfied. Uh, God, just because you mutilate yourself or just because you live an ungodly life, he doesn't love you just because you quit serving God. You're not on the devil's side just because you quit serving the Lord. How the attack of the enemy is not a spur of the moment attack. And how the enemy has a planned attack for your life. He has a custom fit plan to take you out. And a custom fit plan to take you under. I got there familiar spirits knowing everything about you. I got it has a very set plan and how God began last night to call us out of our tombs and call us out of where we've been and call us out of, 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 of our circumstances. He began to call us by name. But uh, Brother G, Brother Luke began to stand up after service and, and he began to enter in into the message that God would have for us here this morning. How God, but you see, we find we know where the man is. And we know how he got there, but how does he get out of there. Oh, Amen. Oh, we find that he begins to run out of these tombs and he begins to find his way to Jesus like a lot of you should have done oh, or did do last night. Oh, Amen. Oh, but oh, we have to understand that he's raised now. He's out of his tomb but he's still got a problem. Amen. Oh, he's oh, still oh, got a bondage. He's still got something holding him. Oh, I got, he's still wrapped up. He's like Lazarus. When Lazarus come out of his tomb, he was raised, but he's still wrapped. Amen. He was still, he was out of his tomb. He was out of where he was, but he wasn't where he needed to be yet. That's right. Amen. We have to understand this morning that hell is an organized force. All right. Oh yeah, right. hey, amen. It's not an unorganized mess like a lot of people believe it is. Right. How God, even Jesus Himself recognized that hell was an organized force. They come to Jesus and they accused Him right. of casting out devils by the name of the devil. They cast Him. They, they they accused Him of casting out the spirits of hell by the power of, of, of Bezalzebub. Right. Hey, amen. They right. hey, but Jesus looked at them and said that's not so. He said, no how divided against his health can stand. He said, and the devil can't cast out the devil. My God, lest the kingdom of hell should fall. He recognized that hell is not an unorganized mess. Our God, but hell is an organized force. We find that in the one book, of the, uh, in one chapter, we find our God, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Uh, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're a liar. Some say you're John the Baptist. But who do you say that I am? Peter rose up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Thy name shall no longer be called Simon, but Peter. Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Amen. That gate of hell lets us know. Amen. If we could turn back to Genesis, we find that Lot sits at the gate of the city. Amen. We turn over to the book. Amen. Of Ruth, we find that. Amen. Her redeemer, her kinsman redeemer. Amen. Finds his brother at the at the gate of the city and gathers those elders together. It's a place where decisions are made. It is a place of organization. It's a place where judgment is made and Jesus makes a recogniz- recognizes here amen the gates of hell and lets me know amen that hell's not an unorganized place oh. amen but it's sitting there this morning trying to make a decision oh. on how it's going to take you under oh. I got hell has come together this morning I got on this Lord's day on this Pentecost Sunday amen they gathered together I got it. They're making a judgment on how they're going to make you stop lifting your hands. How they're going to get you to stop praying. And how they're going to get you in that too. I got it. I'm glad what Jesus said. He said, there's a rock that I'm going to build a church on. Amen. And no matter what the
the plan of the enemy. And no matter what hell concocts to come against you, it cannot prevail against the church. And tells me if I'm with the church, I'm going to make it. And tells me as long as I'm with the church, I can survive. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it's not an unorganized force. But there are spirits working together to destroy you. That's right. It ain't just one spirit of lust. There's many spirits of lust. It's not just one spirit of bitterness. It's many spirits of bitterness. It ain't just one spirit of gossip. It's many spirits of gossip. That God, it is an organized force. I want to let you know why the enemy's fighting this service this morning. Amen. Because the plan of the enemy is being revealed right here this morning. That's right. I told you last night. I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to aware you. My God, because you see, there's spirits working together. My God, it didn't just stop. My God, with a man losing his job. Amen. It went into an addiction and it didn't just stop. And in addiction he didn't lose his job and how God in his help but now he's losing his home amen but he didn't stop there amen now he's losing his family and didn't stop there amen spirits working together how God to destroy your life I want to tell you the devil that you're fighting is a very patient all right all right tell us he's patient oh yes all right it don't matter if it takes him ten years to destroy your life. Amen. Ten years is nothing to the eternity that he's going to spend in a lake of fire. That's right. Amen. He He doesn't care if it takes you 20 years. Amen. To lose your life to hell. Our God, that is an organized working together. Our God, it's spirits that have been sent. Our God, hallelujah, on assignment, my Lord. Our God, to take you under. Our God, I don't believe that, Brother Scott. You just hold on a little while. Amen. And you'll begin to see. Our God, that there's not just one devil after you. Our God, it's many devils after you. Our God, it ain't just one spirit trying to take you under. It's many spirits trying to take you under. I know some of you looking at me like I'm crazy and I'm a preaching about a fairy tale. I got but this ain't a scary movie friend. I got there's actually spirits. I got working together. I said they're working together to destroy your soul. I don't think that any of us are spiritual enough to ever have fought Lucifer himself. He is not omnipresent. Come on now. That's right, amen. But he has a lot of devils, amen, in his arsenal. And they're working together. I got, no, no, you wonder why the baby's sick. I got, you wonder, you think that it's just a sniffle that the baby had. And you don't understand there's a spirit of oppression. I got, because the devil knows he can get your baby sick. He can get you out of the house of God. Amen. If you thought it was just, amen, a run of bad luck. Amen. But he knows. And if you think it's just a run of bad luck, you won't pray about it. You'll try to work it out yourself. Amen. Right. No what it is. I got it's an organized force that's come against the church, my Lord. Right. Amen. The spirits that possessed the man of Gadara. Jesus addressed them. I got Jesus addressed them. And Jesus said, What is your name? A spirit spoke out of the man and said, Legion, for we are many. Legion speaks of an organized and a regimented force. It's an army division of 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers in a Roman army, including Calvary. Amen. What does Jesus do? Let me tell you what Jesus does. He bypasses the man and he talks to his devil. That's right. That's what I'm trying to do this morning. Amen. Listen, I'm bypassing. I got all of your emotions and all of your opinions and all of your attitudes. I got, I'm trying to let you know. I got, there's a devil, there's a spirit, there's an enemy behind everything that wars against your soul. Yes, yes, yes. 
Oh God, it's more than just life's heartache. It's spirits of hell. It's more than just bad luck. It's spirits of hell. You got to understand we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. God, listen to me this morning. Amen. What does Jesus do? Amen. That man of Gadara falls down. I got at the feet of Jesus. Jesus doesn't say anything to the man. Matter of fact, he don't talk to him until at the end. He tells him to go home. I got, but what does he do? He steps around that man and he talks to his problem. He steps around that man and he talks to the devil as a driving him crazy. I got, he steps around that man and he begins to talk to the very thing that's a torment in his soul. Amen. You know what Jesus does? He deals with it. He doesn't ignore it. He doesn't try to overlook it. He doesn't push it aside for another servant. He deals with it. My God, how many times we tried to shout over it? Amen. Try to push it aside. Try to stick it under a Sunday school lesson. Try to hide it behind a sermon. Try to hide it. Come on now. Amen. Oh no. Jesus said the only way you're getting out of here is if I deal with it. Well, it's just bad luck. It's just a sniffle. I got it's just something I'm going through. No, no, no. It's a spirit of hell that's trying to take you out. You got to deal with it. Right, right, right. Oh, God. That woman of Samaria. Turn me up a little bit, brother. That woman of Samaria. I got, what did she do? She started talking real religious. Yeah. Started talking real religious. Started talking about Jacob, her father, right. and the well that he dug. Right. That's right. He even started talking about all this and all what she knew about the patriarchs. What does Jesus do? He didn't say, uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I knew Jacob. Jacob was a nice guy. I really liked Jacob. I remember when his name got changed. I, he was a good man. Right, right. No, no. he pushes her out the way. Right. Right. Where's your husband? <laughs> you know what God needs to do right here this morning he needs to push some of you out the way and say where's your husband amen where's your problem where's your devil at come on now amen where's that spirit taught me in your life amen you've been pity patting with the devil I got you've been playing patty cake I got you've been pretending I got you've been making like it's nothing I could be not as if it's not a big deal amen but I'm going to tell you this morning God's about to push you out the way I said God's about to push you out the way and let you understand it's more than just a problem it's a devil He pushes her out the way. Where is your husband? I don't have a husband. I don't have a problem. Huh? That's what she said. Where's your husband? I don't have a husband. Hey Amen. I don't have a problem. I don't have a devil. I don't have a spirit. I don't have a battle. I don't have a war. The devil is a lie. I got it. You keep saying that. You're going to be a lie like the devil. Hey Amen. I'm going to tell you this morning. You got a battle. You got a war. You got a struggle. You got a spirit. You got spirits that want to take you out. And their spirits on assignment. Oh God. Oh God. Amen. The Bible said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Those principalities, they have to do with regions. Amen. They have to do their regional spirits. They're spirits that take control of whole regions. I found out, amen, when I moved to North Florida and I started pastoring in North Central Florida, I found out there were different devils in North Central Florida than there were in South Georgia. Amen, I found out real quick, I got that there's some spirits that are stronger. I got, that's right. Amen, we got a bad problem in the South with religious spirits. Amen. That's right, we got a bad problem with that. Amen, you know what's wrong with the religious spirit it's hard to convince a religious spirit that they're wrong 
It's hard to convince them because they've got so much backing and they've got so many people supporting their religiosity. I got it. I want to tell you if you're a hypocrite this morning, it ain't just a problem you've got, it's a spirit you've got. I got have mercy. I got, I'm telling you, we're not fighting just a little devil running around. There's principalities trying to take over whole regions. That's why when you find Jesus stepping into a new country in the beginning of his ministry, when he stepped into a new area, the first thing he did was he went to the synagogue. And the first thing he did was he cast the devil out. Yeah. Amen. He went and he took dominion. Amen. Over that area. He took dominion over that city. He took dominion over those people. God God gave us that dominion. Yeah. Adam had that dominion. And sin took it away. God. I'm telling you. And God gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us our dominion back. God. I'm telling you. God. You got more. Listen to me. God. This church. His congregation. I got we can only not only take control of families, I got we can take control of this area. I got because there's principalities. I got that are reached out into this area to take control of the whole place. All right. You don't believe that? Amen. We read of Simon the sorcerer in the book of Acts. The Bible said that everybody in the city come to him because he was of great power. How God, he had control over the whole city. I got by the power of the devil. We find here that God, that Jesus looks at the man of Gadara, asks that spirit, what is your name? Amen. Legion. Amen. He's a regimented force. Amen. He was a regimented force. He wasn't just there to take control of a man. He was there to take control of his family and take control of his city and take control of his country. Amen. My God. Oh God. What was the request of Legion? Legion began to plead with Jesus. Amen. Don't cast us out of the country. Oh yes. Mark chapter 5 verse number 10. And he besought him much. And he would not send them away out of the country. Why? Wow. Because those spirits were on assignment. And those spirits said, we'll leave him, but we won't leave him alone. You hear me? We'll leave his body, but we won't leave him alone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Well, no, we won't possess his vessel anymore, but we can't leave his coast. We are on assignment. Amen. We're on assignment. That's right. Amen. I, I'm going to get to this later, but I want to talk about it for a minute here. The Bible said when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, it walks through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then what does he say? He said, I will now return unto my house. Right. Huh? My house. It ain't your house, my house. Amen, because you see, you might have cast me out of the house. Amen, but that house is still my responsibility. Amen, those spirits are on assignment, my God. Amen, why? Amen, because we will leave his body, but we can't leave him alone. You thought when you got saved that you were through fighting the devil. You thought when you got the Holy Ghost, the devil was going to leave you alone. I got it. I'm going to tell you this morning, those folks got the Holy Ghost at that poor minute. I got those folks in here. The spirits have come back around to take you under. I got him mercy. I want to tell you this morning, he's coming back. Yes, yes. Oh God. He's not only after areas, but you thought that. When you got saved that you would have no more problems with it. But it baffles us and throws us for a loop because we're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, but we're still fighting. All right. Right? Right. 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 Sometimes it throws us for a loop because God delivered me from this addiction, but sometimes 
I get an urge. Oh, God, you're looking at me. I know we're sanctified. I know the desire of sin has been driven out of us by sanctification. How right. God, but that spirit comes back every once in a while. All right. All right. All right. Hello? All right. Is anybody home? All right. Huh? Oh, we can sit there and act like they don't happen if we want to. Amen. But what happens is, is we get uh, we get the, uh, a fight in the Lord's battle. And we get the serving God. I God, but then all of a sudden, I God, the Spirit comes. That old Spirit comes back. I God, to tempt you to go back to what you used to be and do what you want to. Listen, those are spirits on assignment. I tried to let you know last night, they weren't given to you just because you got saved. They were given to you when you were born. I got they were given to you and you were in the womb. They were assigned to you to destroy your life and destroy everything about you. You didn't just get that battle, you've had that battle all of your life. Oh, God have mercy. He's not just after regions, He's after homes. He's not just after David. He's after the house of David. He's not just after Issachar. He's after the house of Issachar. Amen. Those spirits will not only attack a man, but they'll attack his household. That means we've got entire homes bound by spirits. Spirits on assignment. Oh, Lord. It might get quiet this morning. Amen. We've got spirits and and what you don't understand is that there's entire homes that have spirits after them. Amen. That's why our children suffer from Smith devils and Johnson devils and Luke devils. Are you hearing me? Come on. Come on. Come on. Spirits. Yes. Amen. What you didn't understand is when you when you got married. You married into battles. And you married into spirits. Oh yes, that's why some of you young women need to go to sleep like Adam did. And when God gets you somebody, he'll wake you up. That's why some of you boys need to go to sleep like Adam did. And you need to wake up when God wakes you up and has her standing there. Because you don't understand when you get married. Jesus. You marry into spirits. You marry into battles. You marry into struggles. My wife had no idea. My wife had no idea. Jesus. Help She had I had no idea. But you marry in because there's spirits on assignment. Am I too slow this morning? Right. Hey Amen. There's spirits on assignment. And what happens is, is that whole generations are suffering from daddy's devil. All right. All right. And mama's devil. All right. And grandpa's devil. All right. and Jesus. 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 Uh, I, I called my daddy on Mother's Day. I, I pick on my daddy. I called him on Mother's Day and wished him a happy Mother's Day. I said, I just want to thank you. My daddy's not a very sociable man. All right. I said, I just want to thank you that I have to make myself be sociable in the places that we go. All right. All I just want to thank you for that. All right. All right. My daddy's a pack rat. All right. his, his yard's full of boats and cars and tires and batteries and yeah, All right. toolboxes and Junk. I said, I just want to thank you that I have to make myself throw things away because I might need them later. I just want to thank you. Amen. But you see, there's a lot of men here this morning like to pick up the phone and say, Daddy, why do I get angry like you got angry? Daddy, why? Jesus. Mama, why? 
do I do like you did? All right. And grandma did. All right. my, my sister, I have a sister that's, a, she's my only full sister. <laughs> and uh, she's, um, she's uh, 20 years old, I believe. She just turned 20 or fixing to turn 20 in June. And uh, she was doing good, filled with the Holy Ghost and power of God. Her grandma, my mama's mama, was a bar hopper. She was in and out of church, a backslider. She'd get saved singing church. Next weekend, she'd be singing at the juke joint. And uh, my, my grandma on my other side, she was possessed by the devil. She was in the mental institution in Millersville and uh, tried to burn Millersville down. Amen. And, uh, and, and so these are coming down. And we tell Corey, Corey, uh, I remember why Corey was raised up. I said, Corey, uh, we would say, Corey, you got to understand, if you don't stay full of God, you've got some paddles to fight. All right, all right. Corey, you don't understand. If you don't want to be like mama, you better stay full of the Holy Ghost. If you don't want to be like grandma, you better stay covered in the blood. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But I want to tell you, God, that night that her youth leader, who was a policeman, amen, took her into the back seat of the police car. Amen. Then began her to understand, God, that this battle didn't just begin. I'm not Fighting spirits that just, uh, God just come upon me, but they stepped out of grandma's house and, and stepped into mama's house, and, and now they're in the daughter's house, and you don't understand that they're sent to, to take you out. There's spirits on assignment and there's Smith devils and there's Johnson devils. My God, there's Luke devils, there's your devils and your mama's devils. I hope you understand. No, I don't believe a Christian can be possessed by the devil. No, 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 I don't believe. But I'm telling you, we're going to fight some things. We're going to fight some things. Amen. But we can, but the thing about it is, is that there's men here this morning. You said, like I said. I'll never be like my daddy. All right. All right. All right. I watched my daddy when my mama was pregnant with my sister. I watched my daddy power drive my mama in the floor. Jesus. Break her collarbone. Jesus. Emergency room, she said, I fell. Jesus. Broke my collarbone. Jesus. I'm not belittling my daddy. My daddy's saved now. All right. My mama's saved now. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can I just be real this morning? Come on. Come on. So now if I don't pray like I need to. All right. And Shanna looks at me and says, something in me wants to. All right. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Help us. Don't look at me like that. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. That's why some of you get out when you get mad and you drive back and forth in front of the bar. 